Hello and welcome. In this series, we're going to be going over how we can extend Cinema 4D's capabilities to way beyond what it is normally capable of doing, as well as speeding up and making some workflows that you may already be using a little bit more user friendly. So in order to do this, you are going to need a Houdini license. It is a third party program that we're going to be using that has a plugin that works very well with Cinema 4D. And like I said, that's what we're going to be using. You can pick up a Houdini license for free. It's a non-commercial version uh, that you, it's fully featured. You can use it to learn. And like I said, it's free. Absolutely great to start off with and just kind of get your feet wet. And then once you're ready to, if you make under $100,000 in revenue every year, you qualify for an indie license. So feel free to pick that up as well uh, once you're ready to, to use it commercially. Um, it is, I believe, 280-ish dollars, somewhere around there for a year. And then for two-year license, it is uh, $400. So absolutely worth the $400 two-year license, in my opinion. Uh, it's something that I've been using more and more lately and I'm going to only continue to use more, especially since R21 has updated their Houdini engine to use the Houdini version of 17.5. And R20, it was using Houdini 16, and it was kind of buggy. It didn't really work too well. Uh, I had a lot of problems really just getting it to work at all inside of Cinema 4D. But looks like pretty much all of that has gone away inside uh, R21. There are still some things that you can't do that you can do inside of Houdini that you can't do inside of Cinema, uh, but that's to be expected. So the way you're going to get the download for this is you're going to go up to extensions and go to Houdini engine and get Houdini installer. Currently the Houdini version that is out is 18, Houdini 18, uh, but 17.5 is not too far behind it and has most of the capabilities of 18. So like I said, that's the version you will need for Cinema 40 R21. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to Houdini here and this is what the interface is gonna look like. And like I said at the start, we're going to just kind of be going over the basics of this kind of workflow, uh, kind of get in the mindset of how we're going to be creating assets and using them inside of Cinema. So the one thing that I really want to hit on here, start off with, is you're going to be making assets inside of Houdini and you want to use them inside of Cinema 4D. You need to go into it thinking about how you can make them work inside of cinema because there's certain things um, that you're not really going to want to have access to or you're not going to be able to have access to inside of cinema um, that is going to work inside of your HDAs. And that'll make more sense as kind of we go on and get into more advanced things. But you're going to want to design things specifically for Cinema 4D. So we're going to go ahead and just create a simple a noise distortion that we're going to be able to apply to whatever we want inside of cinema. So let's go ahead and drop a geometry node down and jump on into this. And we're going to go ahead and just drop a grid node just so we can visualize the noise that comes with Houdini. So just up the resolution there and then I'm going to drop in the mountain node which is Houdini's version of noise. I'm going to set the display fag and now we can see the noise is applied to our grid. So like I said, the mountain node is the basic noise that's used inside of, of Houdini. I use this quite a bit to just get some variation in things like the ground, like ground disturbance without having to create a full on terrain. If I just were to crank up this element size here, you can see I get some nice distortion in the ground without having to really create a, a full-on terrain and that can be extremely useful for small scenes where you're not getting a big overhead shot of anything you just want a little bit of variation in the ground height so i'm going to go ahead and just reset that you can do that by holding control and middle mouse clicking on whatever the name is and that'll reset it to the default value and i'm just going to leave these at their default values and we actually do not need this grid node so we can go ahead and just delete that. And the reason we don't need that is because we need to be able to actually set the geometry that we want to distort inside of Cinema 4D. 
And the way we're going to use that, or the way we're going to do that, is using the object merge node. So we're not going to be able to see anything because we haven't set anything as the object that we're using, and that's fine. We don't really need to visualize our noise right now. I will do that all inside of Cinema. So you can name this geometry node. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, but you do need to click on it and go up to Edit Parameter Interface on this cogwheel. I'm just going to go ahead and select these three folders and set them to invisible because I don't really care to see them. And I'm going to go and select this folder and drop it into the root and just name this Attributes. So this is going to be the container that's going to hold all of the attrib attributes that we want to actually be able to use inside of Cinema. So go ahead, jump back into our node here, and we want to click on our object merge, and we're going to just drag, click and drag, and drop this into our attributes. So this is going to automatically set up everything that we need, because if you see over here, there are different types of parameters that we can set. So I could just drag in an integer here, and I could use that for something inside of our actual node graph here but I'm not going to worry about that. I don't need that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that by clicking and dragging stuff into here. It's going to automatically set up everything with the correct, uh, the correct use of whatever parameter it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this name of this to object input. And just for the sake of having everything the same, just make that the same as well. And then I'm going to drag a separator into the attributes folder. That's going to just give us a little bit of separation in between our different options here. So I use that to kind of just separate um, big things. And I'll kind of explain here as we go. Like I would put a separator here in between these two as well. So we'll go over that in just a second. So we want to, when I say we want to think about how we want to create things, you want to think about what you're going to be using inside of Cinema 4D. So the main things that we probably are want to get to have access to is the height, probably the element size, the scale offset, and the time. Probably not the pulse length. I don't really use that. And then you're going to want all of these settings probably as well. So let's go ahead and just start dragging and dropping these over here. And whatever these values are set to in the node, they're going to be the default values that are inside of our attributes list over here and if you want to change those so say i wanted the time to be different i can go over to channels and just set the default value to whatever i want here and you can see that when i click on different ones they all change depending on what you're clicked on so like i said i'm going to drop another separator in here separate out the big things and just drag the rest of these on in here all of the attributes that we want to use inside of Cinema 4D and have access to. And then you can go ahead and just click accept because we have everything here. You can see in our node, this is essentially what it's going to look like inside of Cinema 4D. So now all we need to do is just click on there and click right click and create digital asset. And I'm just going to name this surface distortion and then set the file path to wherever we want and I'm just going to name this cinema 4d surface distortion that way I know that this is an HDA that is specifically set up to be used inside of cinema 40 then this pops up I don't really know why that pops up pops up every time for me at least and I don't see anything change no matter what I select there. So just click no changes and you should be good. So we're gonna go ahead and just go up to merge and just bring this on in to our project. Now obviously there's nothing here inside of our viewport because we don't have any geometry that we're bringing in to cinema. We're actually just bringing in uh, our settings basically, bringing in the noise from Houdini. So you see this pops up and this is going to have all of our information. So these are the normal, you know, Cinema 4D stuff. But then you have this asset tab here. And by setting up a folder, 
you can see that it's created this attributes folder right here and it has all of our settings inside. So we can go ahead and just create, I'm gonna create a plane and then I'll set the resolution to be the same as it was in Houdini. Before I go any further, um, this is a red icon. You'll see here in a second when I drag this in that it's going to change to green. That means we're actively editing it and we can go ahead and change it uh, as we go. So we're gonna go ahead and drop the plane into here. You can see it turns green. We can just hide our plane here. And you can see now that our noise is applied to our plane. And then we can go ahead and change all of these settings to whatever we want. And it's going to update onto our, our object. So we can even drop in, say a sphere, set the resolution up a lot more. And then we'll go ahead, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this out. And I'm gonna just delete that for now. And you see it turns back red, that means we're not editing anymore. And we can just drop that in. And now if we hide our sphere again, we have our noise applied again. So like I said, you can go ahead and create that or drop any object that you want, comp no matter how complex or how simple, you can just bring those in. Whoops, I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, bring those into our object and it, it's going to distort them. So it does need to be visible in order for Houdini to recognize it. So you can go ahead, if I just turn on auto keyframing here, we can just create a keyframe there, jump over to our 90th keyframe and change the time to whatever. And then we can go ahead and play this and you're gonna see that we have it animated now. So you can do all sorts of cool different things with using these sort of techniques, um, create super cool stuff. Uh, like I said, this is just kind of the bare bones. I just wanted to kind of show you what you can do with this kind of a workflow, with this kind of a, a mentality when you're using Houdini. We can go ahead and change the I go ahead, just delete these keyframes. And I'm gonna just change up some more of these settings. And see, I change the noise type and we get different looks depending on whatever we choose. So updates fully, it's essentially the same thing that we have inside of Houdini, just inside of Cinema 4D. Uh, it's super useful for things uh, like just distorting, you know, like a, a simple plane for a, a nature scene as well, or something like that, where you wanna just have a little bit of, of distortion in the, in the ground plane, uh, but you don't wanna create a full on terrain. So like I said, this is just something super simple that I wanted to show you. Uh, we're gonna go into a lot more complex things and we're gonna create a lot of, a lot of different cool things. And if you want to actually just save it, this out, you don't want to make this editable anymore. Uh, you want to do some other different things with it. You can just right click and go to current state to object, drag that out of there. And you'll see now if I move this next to it, you're going to see that as we edit this, it's not going to update on the left hand plane because we've set that as a, uh, a new object basically. But if we drag this out, now if we change this, it's going to continue to update. So you can't just drag it out and have it work. You have to actually set a current state to object. Or if you wanna bake out uh, animation, I believe you can just, probably bake as a limbic. Um, I haven't really tried that, but I'm sure that that would work as well. So there's all sorts of cool things that we can do with this. Um, like I said, we're gonna jump into those more, um, but that's kind of the basics on how you can create HDAs inside of Houdini and then use them inside of Cinema 4D. Um, like I said, we're gonna go over a bunch of complex techniques and next we'll probably jump into, um, I did a video on scattering, scattering objects along a, or along a surface, um, but the Cinema 4D tools are 
somewhat kind of not the best for that. So we can create some stuff inside of Houdini that's going to allow us to do a lot more cool stuff with that. Uh, so we'll probably jump into that next, um, as well as you can actually use the the auto UV tools from Houdini and create UVs automatically inside of inside of Cinema 4D as well. Um, at least I believe that works. I haven't actually tried that one yet, but I'm looking forward to trying it. So we'll uh, we'll jump into the next video and show you a little bit more complex techniques here.